over the arm of Tremaine Johnson right there. Trick or treat, Joshua. Sam Darnold, what does he have in his bag? Maybe he can find a way to rally this team back. Instead, he goes with the fadeaway jumper right here. Easy interception. We saw that over and over again last night. What did Sam say, Kyle? He said the Patriots are going to go get Mohamed Sanu. Look at that. Belichick made the move in the second half. That's how it happened. Mm, something about dead people. Oh, yeah, ghosts. Right. Jets lose 33 to nothing. Haley Joel. Bill Belichick celebrating with his defense right there. Okay, they are pretty good on defense. Not too shabby. All right, here we go, guys. Week seven wrapped up last night, so now it's time for me to break out our power rankings Ew. for week eight. This is how teams stand as of right now. Tuesday morning, we wake up. Who are the top five teams in the league? There are some teams with records that might reveal they're better than other teams, and yet they might not make this list. I want you at home to argue with me. I want you at the table to argue with me. No problem. Let's start with number five, a team that went cross-country, went into Seattle. Wow. And walked into that building what? that came out victors, the Brand. Baltimore Ravens. Okay. I'm putting them at number five. That was as impressive a win as any over the weekend. The Ravens sneak into the top five for the first time all season on my list. And what do I want to show you? I want to show you what John Harbaugh was happy about after okay. the game. Let's listen to Harbs as he talks to the media. The noise was incredible. And um, on top of that, we had a bunch of Ravens fans here. We had Josh Charles here. He's sitting right back there. My man. Great man. Uh, great Ravens fan. Great Baltimore person. And uh, great actor, too, man. So uh, just uh, a great day for the Ravens. And so many Ravens fans here. Uh, Josh Charles Twitter. Talk Let's go. About it. Look In out. the house. Knox Overstreet from Dead Poet Society. Yep. Nice. That is Brian from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. That's Will Gardner from The Good Wife. Guys, that's Agent Barker from Muppets in Space. Josh Charles, Baltimore legend, getting a shout out from John Harbaugh. That's how happy they were. And he loved for Sports Night. He loved sport. We love Dan Rydell from Sports Night. That Aaron Great. Sorkin awesome. dialogue just rattles. Hey, Schreiger, how about Earl Thomas left with Russell Wilson's jersey? Fantastic. Came back, brought it back to Baltimore, hung it in oh, his office somewhere. Dishes are done, man. <laughs> Ravens, number five. I've seen that movie. I love that. They're in it. Number Applegate. four. Applegate. Yeah. Who's number four? What do you got? Hmm. Who just took care of business uh, in a way with their quarterback through six touchdown oh. passes in a game? Uh. But I'm going with the pride of Wisconsin Whitewater. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my pictures and my images from this game is all about the man, Jake Kumaro. Talk about it. Division three guy, Jake Kumaro, was originally with the Bengals, doesn't make it out of Bengals camp, ends up with the Packers a couple years ago, and this was the play, the deep pass. Why do I show Kumaro? Because while we're raving about Sanu this morning, going on with Atlanta, and you go team to team that are contenders, I mean, all these squads have these guys. Aaron Rodgers without Devontae Adams, and the beat does not miss a beat. That is what happens. It continues to go on. That drum is pumping, and I'm telling you, the Packers are getting better and better as they go, and it's guys like Alan Lazard last Monday night and Jake Kumaro on Sunday. That number three, scary. number three, staying in the NFC, a team that was the exact same spot last year, the 49ers. They win 9-0. It wasn't like they blew a team out, big time, but they got the victory, and it's all about their defense, and it's all about their defensive coordinator. We know Robert Sala from two weeks ago when he was doing the explanations and the crazy exclamations yep. and the wonderful this and that and this and that. We go to this week's game, and before the game in the pouring rain, a deluge of rain, it's Robert Sala running up and down the stairs. Wow. Run in. This Get a run is in. 9 a.m. Eastern. No one else there. Not even the reporters are there yet. I don't know. Can you see MJ Acosta doing her pregame hit? I don't. I've heard I don't. stories about coaches doing that. I, didn't think, I thought it was an urban myth. No. They didn't I, realize it's really uh, it looks like an angry run. It does. Next segment. That's it. <laughs> Peter, I have to I have to credit tweeter the Gibster. He yeah. said you feel alone against that defense. They call it the solitary confinement. That's great. The Niners defense. The That's Sala, a Niners fan. S A L E H. It's pretty good. Harry confinement. That's so That's good. good. I like it. All right. So who's number two? Oh, I'm going with the Saints number two. The All Saints. Right. I talked about that Ravens victory. How about the Saints going into Chicago with the Bears coming off a of bye week? 
going into the cold weather without Oof. their starting quarterback, without their starting running back, without their starting tight end, and blowing Chicago out. The clip I want to show, though, is Taysom Hill because he's starting to get involved a little bit. What do you got? Two plays, same game. First, it's the fullback, Zach Line pitching it to yes. Taysom Hill for the big 23-yard gain. And then, you know Sean Payton. He's always got more to him. Look at the sideline there. Sean Payton says, we're not done yet. Taysom, get in the end zone, big fella. Enjoy that. The Taysom Hill thing, we thought maybe he'd be under center a lot. No, nah, it's been mostly Teddy Bridgewater, but they still get Taysom involved. He is the man, number seven. Drew Brees, number eight, number nine, might be coming back. But right now, it looks like it's Teddy's team. And Perfect no weapon. Problem. They're the number two team. We hear that phrase a lot. That fullback option was Sean Payton flexing on That's us. That's what it I was. Mean, that was like he was born to call that And play. you know, That's sometimes in basketball, Kyle, like when a big man makes a hustle play, you want to get him the rock on the Of course. Rock. That's what that was. Get, get him the rock. In the end zone. He deserves okay. it. It's number one team is the Patriots. They're the best. You heard Sam Darnold. We already played it. We're going to play it again. He said, I saw a ghost last night. I thought Kyle Van Noy in the locker room summed up a lot of people's feelings around the New England area this morning. Take a listen. The man. That's the Boogan man. It's real. <laughs> you talking about the kind of the continuity of your defense where up front you guys are putting Sorry, sure. sorry. He really said that? Yeah. 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 Well, how were you guys able to rattle him for that's, him to that's see That's crazy goes. for him to say that. It is. That's, that makes it real. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good up there right now. And they just got Mohamed Sanu, if you're waking up. They just traded for him. But that's the 5K. Kyle, Sean, I look to you guys because there are a lot of teams with better records yeah. than some of these squads who are not on this list. I'm not mad at your list. I do want to know who's at number six. Who is it hard for you personally to keep out of your top five? Can I tell you who? Because I know the Bills only have one loss, and I know a lot of people right now are Panthers fans saying, what? Well, the way the Minnesota Vikings are playing right now is such a good brand of football. It's the brand of football that's going to get them somewhere. And to not put the Vikings on this list was very difficult. They just had a huge win in Detroit, and Cousins looks great. Back-to-back -back weeks being the Eagles and Lions. But I don't have the Vikings yet. I feel like I've got to see a little more before I'm going to have them jump this Ravens team that just went into Seattle. Peter, what's your conviction to have number three on top of number four? And could you swap that? Packers, Niners right now, you think the Niners got Rodgers? They got Kumaro? They got Lazard? They're a crazy last-second play away, an interception by Nigel yep. Bradham at yep. the goal line from being undefeated. And yet... This brand of football works for these guys and works for these guys. These are two of the best defenses in the entire NFL, Patriots and Niners. Until someone can score in the Niners, I can't put the Packers above them. Well, since you mentioned it, let's go right there. Patriots, 49ers. Talk about the gap between those two teams. And I mean, is that a prelude to what the Super Bowl could look like? You mentioned those defenses, the 49ers doing it with their front. The Patriots really doing it with the back end, right. so two totally different styles. And the quarterbacks know each other, huh? Oh, Peter, so. Brady Garoppolo a little bit. Talk about, just talk about it. I mean, come good. on. And yet, I don't want to get ahead of myself because these guys are number no, no, two. They're amazing. And when Drew Brees comes back, amazing. we might be looking at Brady Brees. And, hey, now. And I would sign up for that right now. <laughs> cool. I love it. Cool, cool with this? Yeah, pretty I cool. like it. Yeah, yeah Bills free. fans. Peter is supposed to kick you in the shins, but no, the good. Bills have one loss, and they're not even on this list. Bills Mafia, come so. after your boy. All right, our guy, George Kittle, by the way, he took home the crown last week. Who will be the angry runs champion?